Hi, I'm Ben from The Things Industries. The Things Virtual Conference is here. Everyone is getting more and more excited about LoRa and LoRaWAN. And so we decided to review five popular indoor gateways to compare everything from ease of use and design to antenna options and of course, cost. Today, I'll take a look at those gateways with you and talk about their features. The five gateways we're gonna look at are the Microtech WAP LR8, the Multitech Conduit AP, the Laird Centrius RG1, the Tectelic Kona Micro, and, oh, I forgot one. And of course, the Things Indoor Gateway. We looked at cost, available wireless and LTE backends, basic station support, design, and even in some cases packaging to try to give you a good all-round idea about what these gateways are like. They're all great gateways with differing price points and features. All of them will, of course, route LoRaWAN packets and they're all compatible with the Thing stack. Let's take a closer look. The Microtech WAP LR8 is our first gateway. It supports 2.4 GHz wireless and Ethernet backhauls. It's weatherproof, so you could technically use it outside, but it comes with a built-in indoor antenna and hardware to attach a more powerful external antenna. It can be powered via Ethernet, and it has a clever little PoE adapter that you can use to do that and retain the weather ceiling. It has the same tried and true form factor from a lot of Microtech's other products. And one thing I really like about Microtech is their router OS. It's really well designed and it's really easy to set up their gateways. The gateway automatically exposes a Wi-Fi access point, which you can connect to and quickly configure the device so you don't need an ethernet jack on your computer. You can configure it via Wi-Fi to either use Wi-Fi or LAN as a backend. Here's what it looks like to configure the Microtech gateway. The only downside is that there's no basic station support, but I'm sure that Microtech is working on that. The WAP LR8 has an MSRP of $169. And it comes in this nicely designed, ecological, recyclable packaging, which is a nice touch. Next up is the Multitech Conduit AP. The Conduit comes with an internal 2 dBi antenna or an optional external antenna. It supports Ethernet as a backhaul with an optional LTE add-on. The menu system is really well designed and it's really easy to configure the device as well, but you do need an Ethernet jack on your computer in order to connect to and configure the Multitech AP. And the first time you connect, you need to switch it from a DHCP host to a DHCP client before you connect it to your private network. Here's what it looks like to configure the conduit. Multitech's latest firmware, 5.30, supports basic station, which is great. The conduit costs 290 euros for the AP version, all the way up to 1,250 euros for the IP67, I believe. Next up is the Laird RG1, which comes in this blue housing with LEDs on the front, so you know what's going on. We have an RG186 here, which supports the EU868 frequency plan, but there is also an RG191, which supports most of the rest of the world. It comes standard with a LoRa antenna and two Wi-Fi antennas, and it boasts an impressive 10 mile range, although I think that's outdoors. It's probably more like one to three miles indoors. The RG1 supports Ethernet and Wi-Fi backhauls with an upcoming LTE model for the US. The RG1 also exposes a Wi-Fi access point, so it's really easy to configure, no Ethernet jack required. 
Here is what it looks like to configure the RG1. It also supports basic station. The layered gateway retails for about $250. Next up is the Kona Micro. The Kona Micro is a very compact gateway designed for enterprise and light industrial applications. It's the only gateway with an internal battery backup, so it will continue to receive and store lower WAN packets even if the power or network connection are lost, which is great for mission critical applications. The configuration is all done via the command line. There's no graphical user interface. Here's what it looks like to configure the Kona Micro. Tectelic did just release basic station support in their latest firmware. The Kona Micro costs 235 euros with Ethernet backhaul or 310 euros with Ethernet and LTE backhaul. Finally, we've got the Things Indoor Gateway. It's the most compact of these gateways, based on a small ESP microcontroller, and it supports only Wi-Fi as a backhaul. But that means it's really easy to configure. Just plug it in and it exposes a Wi-Fi access point, which you can connect to and then enter your own Wi-Fi credentials. And you're done. It comes pre-configured with basic station cups, so it automatically connects and retrieves network server information. You just need to register it in the Thing stack. Here's what it looks like to configure the Things Indoor Gateway. Things Indoor Gateway costs 69 euros. Hopefully this helps you to make a decision about which gateway you might like to use. And we really encourage you to get started building your own LoRaWAN network or to contribute to the community and add a gateway to the public The Things Network. Thanks for watching.